That is critically acclaimed singer-songwriter Nick Cave, who is currently touring America. The Australian artist may be best known for his haunting songs about life, love, and loss. But in his latest best-selling book, Faith, Hope, and Carnage, Cave explores those topics through strikingly candid conversations. Anthony Mason recently visited Cave in London. Anthony, good morning. Good morning. Nick Cave experienced the most profound grief over the past eight years, but he says he's come out the other side. And both the book and the music that he's created are surprisingly hopeful and uplifting. Nick Cave has been making music for more than four decades. If I could sail a galleon ship as a solo artist the sky. and as the frontman for his band, The Bad Seeds. Raise your hands up until the sky. Is there wonder? Oh, my Lord. He's also an actor, an author, even a ceramicist. Music's a little... Atmospheric. Yeah, kind of lives somewhere. I don't know, I can't see it, where is it? But um, <laughs> this is this little thing yeah. that sits on the mantelpiece. You know? At one point you say in the book... You Faith, know, Hope stronger and mind, Carnage, Cave's latest book, grew out of conversations he had with journalist so Sean O'Hagan during the pandemic. Thought. I think that the utility of religion very much is the thing that Guy, can guide you out of some very dark times. Cave went through some of the darkest eight years ago when his son Arthur died after falling from a cliff. He was 15. In the book, Cave lays bare his grief. How difficult was that for you? Um, it was, it, it was a relief in a way. I could feel it literally rushing through my body and bursting out the ends of my fingers, Cave says. A kind of annihilation of the self, an interior screaming. It was a strange experience for me because it was pu very public to know what had happened to me. Everyone knew about it. Fans started to write to him. For so long has my grief been an inextricable part of me, Alison. He answered on a website he calls the Red Hand Files. Did you feel the, the need to speak in yeah. some way? You did. Yeah, I just didn't know how to talk about things and I didn't know how to articulate my loss. And I, I basically learned that through writing the Red Hand Files. You said that fans, in effect, saved your life? Yeah, I would, I would say that they, they certainly um, saved me a, a life of uh, internal thinking. I'm curious what role music played for you in this. M music for me, and especially songwriting, is, is a kind of abstract way of articulating loss. Music has that extraordinary potential of, of taking extremely complex things and sort of packaging it in a, uh, in a universal language that we can all kind of understand. With collaborator Warren Ellis, he wrote Ghostine, an album inspired by the spirit of his son. It felt like these songs were, were, were sort of reaching towards him in some way. I am beside you. Look for me. I try to forget. Grief is just a great big swirling, confusing thing. You know, yeah. and you try and make sense of it as best you can. But when I finished that record, I, I felt I'd done something for my child. Arthur was one of his twin boys with his wife, Susie. Your wife's experience was actually quite different. I think that mothers who've lost children, it's a different thing. It's like a circle of hell reserved for mothers who've lost children. It's, it's complex and yeah. primal. But Cave says she channeled her grief. 
and her energy into her work as a dress designer. I could see the transformation, which I found extremely moving. The words you use in the book uh, are that a, a strange, reckless power came out of your grief. Yeah. What was that power? It's s simply that it doesn't matter what happens next. The, the, the worst has happened, or at least it seems yeah. to you at the time the worst, the worst has happened. Yeah. It actually may not be that the worst has happened, I'm sorry to say. Last year, the worst happened again. His son Jethro, by an earlier relationship, died at 31. It was very, it was very, very difficult, that. It was very, very difficult. I, I think that that sense of loss makes us the sort of soulful people that we can be, mm -hmm. that we are not when we're young. Do you feel like a different person? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, after uh, Arthur died, after Jethro died, after my mother died, these things, um, th these things make you love people and humanity and value people and understand the sort of fragile nature of people. And it's made me kind of love the world more. For Cave, creation became an act of defiance. And when I started to do concerts and go on stage, I, I was sort of stepping into the regard or the love of my audience, and, and I felt that I needed to uh, give something back. M music becomes a healing force anyway. Yes. It's one of the last things we have left, really, that, that actively attempts to, you know, rehabilitate the world in some kind of way. Nick Cave celebrated his 66th birthday yesterday, so happy birthday to Nick. Uh, Faith, Hope, and Carnage, uh, as we mentioned, he's on tour in the States right now, and Faith, Hope, and Carnage just came out in paperback. This is a book about creativity, it's a book about faith, and as we discussed, it's a book about dealing with grief. And in that sense, to me, it's incredibly important, because it's a conversation we're still afraid to have in this mm -hmm. country. You know, if you've been through a chapter, anything like that, it's so hard for people to talk about it and you feel really alone. So what he's done here, I think, is, is really meaningful in so many ways. And he's done it so eloquently. And the, the remarkable thing about that collective grief that he's talking about here is that he has such a beautiful philosophy because of yes. what he has gone through and the act of defiance that he calls all of this. Well, so much of the strength he gained came from other people who'd been through similar things who reached out to him. Mm -hmm. That's a really important part of this. Grief is such a human thing, and he talks about it in such a human way. As much as society is afraid of it, you know, he's he's done something really valuable yeah. here. And he's open to having more conversations. Yeah. I can't wait to read it. Thanks. Anthony, great. Great story.